Welcome to our church service here on the south of England in Hampshire, in Bedhampton Parish. My name is Max Cross and I am the rector, the church leader here in Bedhampton. You are most welcome as we come together, although we are distributed, we come together to worship God here this week. Just a few pieces of news before we begin. Uh, you may be aware that we also meet physically in our church buildings on a Sunday. That's 9 a.m. at St. Nicholas's and 11 a.m. at St. Thomas's in Bedhampton. You'd be welcome to join us whether you've been with us before or not. You'd be welcome to come along. Just book in uh, either by phone in or, or go into the website. Details on the screen now. And also to say, as we approach remembrance, you can do the same thing for that. You can book in for that. We will be having a remembrance service online as well. But for our physical remembrance service, we will be gathering at around quarter to 11 at St. Thomas's on Bibbury Lane. And it would really help us if you think you're going to come along to that, if you could book in so we can prepare the space for you. It's important that we remember those who have fought for our freedom, and not just in the past, but also today. And we take that seriously here in Bedhampton. So we'll be gathering for that service. If you could book in, that would be really helpful. Um, and also we will be doing it online as well. If, just to say, all the pieces of news we share are in our weekly sheet, which you may get by email. But if you don't, you can request as well. So just uh, send me an email about that and I will add you to the list. Or you can pick up a copy of that in St. Thomas's, which is open for prayer on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday between 9am and 4pm. Other than that, I think it's important now that we just carry on with our worship. And so let's take a moment to uh, just to still ourselves, just to come before God as we go through the same service that Vanda is leading in St. Thomas's this Sunday. So let's take a moment to be quiet for it. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And as we open together, let's say this prayer as one body. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And of course, one of the reasons we would like to worship our God is because he cares for us. He first came looking for us and he sent his son that we might have life and life to the full. And so we come before him regularly just to say sorry for the mistakes that we make. He loved us first and yet we still make mistakes and he acknowledges that. That's why he sent his son. And so before we continue in our worship, let's take a moment to do that. Let's reflect on our lives, the areas where we've made mistakes, uh, the areas where we have sinned and repent of them and turn back to God. Let's do that together now. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, 
Forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. And so may Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring his pardon and peace now and forever. Amen. And when God brings pardon, when God brings forgiveness and peace, it is truth because he only has the truth in him. We're going to sing a song now or listen to a song uh, called Yes and Amen, which just reiterates that as we worship our God.
somebody's promises are yes and amen. So when he promises, he delivers because he is God. He created the universe. He created you and I. He is capable of providing forgiveness for our sins. He is capable of providing life to the full. Yes and amen. We're going to have our Bible readings now. We place a high importance on scripture at Bedhampton. And we learn it's God's word for us. We learn from this what it means to walk with God and with Jesus. And so today we're going to hear from Joshua, uh, which is a book in the older part of the Testament. Um, and then we're going to hear from Matthew, where we begin again to look at the gospel, one of the biographies of Jesus called Matthew. Uh, we're part way through that now. You can catch up with our previous uh, readings on Matthew on the website if you want. But we're going to hear from Joshua and Matthew today. The reading is taken from Joshua chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods that your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The reading is taken from Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 13. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for those readings, both to Anne and Susie. And, uh, and now Polly, who uh, worships predominantly at St Nicholas's, is, uh, is going to break apart what she thinks God has been saying to her about those passages. For a while now, as a church, we've been looking at the book of Matthew. This is one of the Gospels that we'll find at the beginning of the New Testament. And from Matthew 5 to Matthew 7, we have what's commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount. This is teachings direct from Jesus. And the good news for you today is that the sermon I'm going to give you won't go on as long as the Sermon on the Mount. Recently, I've been doing the Bible course along with Max and some other members of the congregation. And one of the things we've been learning from this course is the importance of putting what you read in the Bible into context. So let's just start looking at the context of Matthew 5. Here we have the Sermon on the Mount, which is the first of Matthew's five major teaching blocks. Jesus is showing us what life should be like in the kingdom of heaven. That's his term for the kingdom of God. And last week from uh, Matthew, Fleur spoke to us about the golden rule. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. And she challenged us to raise the bar. So not to do the minimum, but to do the maximum. And today we move on to Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many may enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. I wonder when you think about the narrow gate and the wide gate, which one of those you would like to enter? And you see, where we are in the Sermon of the Mount, we've got a set of warning signs and we need to take note of the dangers. We need to keep our wits about us. And the first of these warning signs is making sure we go through the right gate. It's not very wide and you need to watch out for the people who are going to lead you off the road. And we've got a choice. We can go through the wide gate that's easy to get through. We can go with the flow or we can go through the narrow gate. 
And the symbolism of gates would have been very, very common to the people Jesus was preaching to. Because in the old wall city of Jerusalem, there were several gates. Some of them were wide and some of them were narrow. And if you were going along with the crowd, going along with the flow, it's very easy when you went through a wide gate. But if you were going with the crowd and you came to a narrow gate, you could actually easily miss it and not go through it. Because you see, the choices we make matter. Our actions matter and our motives matter. We need to learn to follow Jesus and know God as the Father because that's what matters. And the gate that leads to destruction is wide, but the gate that leads to uh, the path, is it, the small gate, is narrow, it's inconspicuous. But that's the gate that will lead us to the way of life. And we're told in the Bible that the life of a disciple is not easy, but it's immensely rewarding. And actually, I believe it is the only way. But as I said, we have a choice. We're not the only people who have a choice. If we look right back into the Old Testament and we look to the book of Joshua. Joshua was the leader who led the people of Israel into the promised land. And he had been the one who had been one of the last ones to choose his place in the promised land and choose the plot of land he was going to settle on. But God's promise of the land for the Israelites was not unconditional. And Joshua warned the people that if they didn't obey God, then the Lord will turn against you and you will quickly perish from the good land that he has given you. That's what we read in Joshua 23. And the most important condition for continuing to enjoy the land that they'd been given was that they continued to worship the Lord. And the Israelites could choose between a number of different gods. The gods that Abraham had once worshipped when he was lived down beyond the Euphrates. The gods of Egypt when they'd been slaves. Or the gods of the Amorites who were the people who were living in the promised land. Joshua called the people to make a clear choice about which god they would serve. And the choice was important, as you know, our God is a jealous God. He doesn't want to share his worship with others, but he does want us to give him free and voluntary worship. And in Joshua 24, we read, Now then throw away the foreign gods and among you, and yield your hearts to the Lord. Yield to him. Fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your forefathers. Throw away the gods they worship beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you are going to serve whether the gods of your forefathers beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land as you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. That was Joshua's choice. And he called the people to make a clear choice. To make a choice. Are you going to worship the gods of your forefathers or are you going to serve the Lord? And we read in John chapter 4 verse 23 that true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Joshua was a humble leader, the last to lay claim to any piece of land in the promised land. But as a spiritual leader, he was the first to declare his uncompromising stand on the matter of worship of God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua would certainly have chosen to go through that narrow gate. He wouldn't go with the flow. He wouldn't follow what other people were doing. He wanted to serve the Lord. He wanted to go through the gate that would lead to life. So what's your choice going to be?
Are you going to choose to enter through that narrow gate? Are you going to stand up like Joshua did and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord? And what difference is it going to make for your life? Let's just take a moment to be silent and reflect on that. Father, we know we need to make a choice of going your way or going with the flow. A choice between entering through the wide gate or going through the narrow gate. A choice of serving the gods we see around us or following you. And Lord, may we be like Joshua and be able to say, As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Polly, for sharing that word for us today. Really crucial to us. Do you know there's a children's song that we used to hear a lot when my kiddies were smaller? Uh, It just repeats that line. As for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. As for me and my house, we will worship God. One of my favourite Reminders from God's scripture are those words. Because we all have to make that decision, don't we? As Polly was saying, what's your decision? What's my decision? Well, if you uh, have made that decision today, I would love to chat with you. I'm sure Polly would love to have a conversation um, as well, if you'd prefer to talk to her. Um, We'd love to understand with you how you would like to move forward in that decision making. What is it we can do to help you walk with Jesus as you go forward after that decision? Or maybe uh, that has brought some ideas into your head. Maybe you want to explore Jesus further before making that decision. And if that's you, can I just say we've also uh, run regularly a a course here called the Alpha Course. And we'll be doing it again um, in the new year. So you'd be most welcome to join us as we look at that, uh, probably online, if I'm honest, uh, but we've done some uh, online work over the last few months with Alpha and the Bible course, and it works really well. So do get in contact with me. Do let me know if that's of interest to you, and, uh, and we can move forward with that. But if God has been nudging you through his spirit today, don't, don't just bat it aside. Take it on board and investigate further. And we're going to say this thing we call the creed now, which is just a statement of our beliefs. Having said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We are now going to read together out loud what it is we believe means serving the Lord. So let's say this together with the words as they come up on your screen. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now our friend Mike, again, who predominantly worships normally at St. Nicholas's, is going to lead us in our prayers. Because we believe not only in Father, Son and Holy Spirit, but we believe that God answers prayers here in Midhampton. And so we lift to him our worship in prayer, but also our, our concerns of the world, our concerns of our own life. And Mike is going to lead us in that now. Lord and Father of all. The heavens adore you. May the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you. All tongues bless and confess you. And all people love you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this precious time we can share with you now. Open our hearts to receive your Holy Spirit as we pray. Please speak to each one of us during this time of prayer and reflection. 
Guide us along the narrow path leading to light. And bring in those prayers and the prayers that are on your heart together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. We say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we head towards the end of our time here together, we are going to sing or let the words float over us, a song that is so special to my heart. In Christ alone. Christ alone, our hope is found. As we finish together today, don't forget that uh, we are gathering 
uh, for remembrance on the 8th of October. And if you want to come to that, then please let me know as soon as possible. But there will be an online remembrance as well. Um, don't forget as well, you can go along to St. Thomas's and Bibri Lane for prayer on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, private prayer, anytime between 9 and 4 p.m. And also do join me on a Wednesday morning as we gather online together to pray for God's kingdom to come where we live. Details can be found on the new sheet or on the website, uh, but do come along and let's pray for God's kingdom just to take over Bedhampton. But as we finish together, let's say this prayer. God of our pilgrimage, you have led us to the living water. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And bring to mind now those that perhaps you would normally worship with or those that you love but haven't seen for a while. And as we bring them to mind, let us bless them and one another by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Have a brilliant week and uh, do be praying as well that God and through his spirit just leads you through that week. That is my constant prayer. That actually, we as a church, the people, will be led by God's spirit here in Bedhampton. See you soon. Faith.